You, uh, you've got three entrepreneurial successes in three different markets. Uh, what made you want to enter those markets? Uh, how did you evaluate them? And, and what made you think you could actually succeed? A friend of mine had started just playing around with a website called thespark.com, which was this online humor site, kind of like The Onion is today. And, um, and in the fall of my senior year, he sent me a link to thespark.com. He said, you should check this out. And I checked it out. And I wasn't too impressed, and I said, okay, whatever, I'm gonna go back to work. And so I go back to you know, recruiting and, and trying to get a consulting job. And uh, so I did that, and then he sent me an email again three months later, he's like, hey, check this out. And I'm like, okay, so I'm not that impressed. He's like, well, I have half a million users uh, using this site. He's like, okay, I'm impressed. Um, we should, I should, I'd like to learn more. So we started hanging out, and, uh, and by the spring, we realized it was pretty interesting. and so. Actually, uh, the, way I, the way we funded the business is I signed an offer letter with a consulting firm and I took the signing bonus and put that in the company's bank account. So that was, that was uh, non-traditional non bootstrapping, I guess. <laughs> I did pay it back, actually. Um, but I, uh, uh, and basically, we, we incorporated the company in March and the first thing we did uh, after deciding to do the, the spark.com was to decide that spark.com was a bad business. Um, we didn't want to be in the entertainment business uh, creating content on a daily basis. And so we said, well, we have this half a million college students coming to our site, high school college students coming to our site every day, uh, or every week, whatever it was. Uh, you know, what else can we offer them that would be interesting? And so uh, one of my friends uh, had Cliff's Notes up on his shelf, and uh, my other business partner said, why don't we just do Cliff's Notes? Cliff's Notes was a brand that had been around for 50 years and had 90 plus percent market share. Like, there, you probably couldn't even name, I bet most of this, you couldn't even name the, the second player in the study guide space. Uh, it was that dominant. And we took that market share. We became the dominant player in only 18 months from the time we launched SparkNotes. And so I kind of developed this. And then we sold. And then we sold it, yeah. Um, and we kind of developed this theory, and at the time it was sort of price, quality, and fun was the Arthur axis. Now we call that social in the new, in the new uh, nomenclature. So we said, look, if you, well, the reason CliffsNotes worked was because we were better, cheaper, and more fun to use better user experience. And if you sort of take the inverse of that, you say, well, imagine if you were the incumbent and you had to compete with someone that had a better product that was cheaper and more fun, uh, how would you compete against that product? So we start to think about, well, what are the areas online, um, what categories are there where you can compete on price, quality, and fun? And it turned out there were three that we found. There was uh, gambling, pornography, and uh, dating. And my wife said to me, can you please not be the porn guy? <laughs> <laughs> the market was eHarmony, Match, and Yahoo. They were all um, they were all $20 a month or more. Uh, they were all products that hadn't really developed algorithmically. Uh, they hadn't really competed on algorithms and quality. And they had an air of, they weren't that fun to use. People felt not great about it. That's changed a little bit but at the time. So we said, look, this is perfect. This really uh, falls into our thesis of being uh, better, cheaper, and more social.